Take your Bibles, open them, and open your hearts to the book of First Peter. Uh, First Peter. Uh, we would like to be blessed by Peter. Um, would that be exciting to you? I struggled with the title of this sermon today. I've kind of uh, thought of Peter to us. Peter to us today, and and. And then I thought, well, that, that's kind of a, a boring title. And then I thought of the title, Blessed by the Pope. But it's the non-Pope as we study the biblical Peter compared to uh, uh, that word in other usage, okay? Uh, I don't know if you know this, but when I went to Europe, I was blessed by the Pope. Do you know that? You don't know that, do you? Um and we're going to describe who that Pope was. His name was Yosef Pope. His, he was the pastor of the Baptist Church in Fatesh, Romania. And he was such a blessing to me. And they joked about him being the Pope, but he wasn't the Pope Pope. Um, and neither was Peter, as we'll find out just who this Peter was. But the purpose of his writing is exciting to us as the blessing of the book to our souls. And I know this junior church is exciting. Uh, I wish sometimes I could go, <laughs> but I, I can never uh, quite make it there. Uh, but, but I hope that you come with open heart and open Bible to be, to be blessed by Peter today. Why? Because if we read the whole book, and Lord willing, we shall, uh, and chew on it verse by verse through it, the blessing is to us. It's a blessing of of preparation. It's a blessing of God to us to help people who needed encouragement. Uh, does that mean you or me? Uh, how about that? Need encouragement? I've joked only the days that start with T, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, today, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. I need a little bit of encouragement, a little juice, a little, a little blessing, a little encouragement. Um, it was people who were uh, going to face or were already facing trials and tribulation and even persecution. And I wonder if we spoke abroad in the world today, more persecution going on against Christians and even on the horizon, I wonder what there shall be uh, as far as uh, a persecution. Peter had that in his day in first century Christianity. There was persecution from the Roman government uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever dealt with or the thought of persecution from the government. It happened from the offset of Christianity. Uh, there were persecution from the religious crew of the day. And we know the Jews did all they could to stamp out uh, Christianity. And anyone who would name the name of Christ, particularly when people uh, followed the Lord in believers' baptism, it was a it was a mark that you are publicly, unashamedly identifying with this dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. And they scorned that, and they would write you out of the family will. They would do your funeral, though living physically, they would do your funeral in a family, in a religious persecution. And then, oh, how the government uh, persecution would uh, escalate under Nero and other uh, tyrants. And, and so there needed to be a a preparation, and I, I wonder if um, we could think of a spiritual prepper. Uh, are you a, are you a prepper spiritually for all that might be around the bend, uh, physically in our lives, emotionally in our lives, uh, uh, circumstantially, financially, uh, in, in relationship to the government, in relationship to the things that are on the offset? I wonder if we could be blessed uh, by the book of First Peter to be prepared. For whatever, I mean, just come at it. Come at me. Just have an attitude of, I'm ready. How could we be ready? Well, listen closely, and 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 we'll be ready uh, even by touching the first couple of verses. Let's read them now, where it gives the author, this Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Let's pray together and then uh, dive into this little introduction for the glory of God. Father, I pray that you would uh, bless us today, just as those scattered Christians throughout all the region there were blessed by the epistle of Peter as he poured out his heart of preparation to those who needed it. Father, I pray that you would Help us, Lord, to, to look up and to look to you, Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So a warning and a blessing to those who would look ahead just a little bit and maybe not be able to see around the horizon, but, but for the glory of God, they would be blessed with all that they needed. All that ever lied ahead would be ready for those as they listened even to today, first couple of phrases, first couple of sentences in the book of First Peter. So blessings to you, blessings to me is the message today. Blessings, yes, to those long ago, but I, 2,000 years later, can be equally as blessed by these couple questions that we'll give, two questions blessing us today. The first question is, Peter who? Peter who? We don't see a last name. We don't need a last name because we know that this was Peter the apostle, the one called the follower, the disciple of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, one of the 12. Peter who uh, was in hearing of that call of the Lord at the Sea of Galilee, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway, right away, he, he left and, and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we can trace Peter in his uh, being a, a thunderous uh, disciple of the Lord. And, and some have labeled Peter open mouth, insert foot. Because he was the one who said, you know, I'll jump on that water. I'll call down fire. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, never deny you, Lord. And, and into his mouth many times would, would go his foot. And the one who needed uh, humility. And I don't know about you, uh, but we can find ourselves and our lives uh, and our needs in the life of Peter who after the resurrection says, I'll go fishing, and, and the other disciples followed, uh, we go with you also. But the Lord tenderly calls him again to a higher calling and, and said to him, feed my sheep, and do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times, and, and, and feed my sheep, and how then the power of the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon Peter, and how that he uh, was blessedly used of God in the early church and now in his writing to us. And so this is, this is the, the Peter, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while some have put him on a pedestal, I would like to just uh, take these words. Uh, he was a follower among followers, a follower like we should be followers. And that's the first word I would give you, follow me. And I will make you to become fishers of men. Fishing for fish is exciting. Um, that's uh, something I don't do well. I, I enjoy it. In fact, I enjoy just the possibility of catching a fish. I, I could have a snag. And it could be just exciting for a while until I have to break the line and lose my favorite lure again. Uh, and another one again. And, and, and so, so uh, fishing for fish is, is exciting. Uh, but I, I wonder if uh, there's something way more exciting, way more exciting, uh, is what the Lord called Peter to. I wonder if the I go a fishing uh, was his final chapter in his life, and a fishing he went hypothetically, and 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 in his life, and even leadership of of the other disciples who went fishing with him. Um, if that was if that was it, if that was all, and at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, great big piles of slimy, stinky fish. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, and, 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 and 
not the following of the calling. Peter was a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are too. And you can be blessed by his willingness and, and challenged and encouraged to be a follower, a close follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he was a messenger in, in a specific sense. He was an apostle, a sent one. And while that had great foundational uh, relationships to the early church, there is also a general sense of you and I are also sent once. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And he breathed on them and, and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And what a wonderful uh, message is present there of the power to be the messenger of God to those that God has called us to. Who is that? Everyone we meet. Everyone we meet needs Jesus and needs the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are in Christ's stead. Second Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That, that needs to fill and thrill our ministry and our purpose here. That as we give out the gospel track, we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. Paul wasn't ashamed of anything. It was the dunamite, the power of God, the dynamite of God to a lost and needy world. We are God's messengers. We stand in Christ's stead. Now, we ought to do it humbly. I, if, if we had a special speaker today, and it was Jesus Christ himself, and the word got out effectively, uh, I would pray the whole, <laughs> the whole township and the whole Lehigh Valley would be packed. But humbling it is that, that God's plan is different. His plan is that you and I would be his ambassadors and that we would be in Christ's stead. That yesterday as we witnessed to that dear lady trying to reconcile and redeem herself, that in Christ's stead we were able to share the truth that, that she is not and we are not able to pay the penalty of our sin that we owe a debt that we cannot pay but Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe and we can be reconciled by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and what a blessed message as we are a messenger then uh, sent to others and then Peter also in first Peter 5 was a, a shepherd among other shepherds if Peter ever had a chance to toot his own horn, it would be in a context like 1 Peter chapter 5, where he says in verse 1, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also, and he could have put right there, who am also the head and the, the, the big capital R rock and the one whom everybody's supposed to look to and bow down to as and kiss the ring of and 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 no, no, he just says uh, that he was speaking to these elders scattered abroad in God's plan out working throughout the region there of assembly after assembly after assembly. And instead of saying he was some big chief head, honcho head of this whole thing, uh, he, he just simply says to the elders who, who am also an elder. He's also an elder. And to the witnesses who he was also a witness and in a special way, he was an eyewitness of the suffering of Christ. In a special way, yes, he was an eyewitness of the resurrection. In a special way, he was called by Jesus and a rock and a cornerstone. But Christ is the cornerstone. And so these little rocks are important just as a foundation is. But that foundation is not to be carried on today in some uh, worship and exaltation of any man. Of any man. Peter wouldn't do it himself. He just said, I'm an elder, I'm a shepherd, just like other shepherds, and humbly he has this position for the glory of God. We too 
have a position of shepherding, whether it be our children of our home, whether it be of the newborn babes in Christ that we share together a spiritual influence over, whether it be an assembly of believers here. And God put this sheepfold imagery that we know so well. And I love our little theme of we are found by the good shepherd to follow the good shepherd and to gather, do it, to gather, do it, and to gather together. What a blessing it is today. Amen. Just to gather like this. I tell you what, I wish we were having a picnic. <laughs> I got the grills staring at me. I don't know if any of them work, but they <laughs> they are staring at me. Uh, I, I what, a, what a blessing just to see your faces. Amen. Uh, that's a blessing. And to gather together, to come together and fellowship together. What, what a blessing for the glory of God. And, and so this is the, the abiding imagery. And, and Peter had a, a mission and he was on a mission. He was on a mission for the glory of God uh, to, to keep on serving. Uh, one translation of that first verse, it says, Peter, an apostle, and I love the next phrases of this, this thought here of a paraphrase, on assignment by Jesus, the Messiah, on assignment. I wonder if that would grip you in the morning to get up. Well, what are you getting up for? I'm on assignment for Jesus. Uh, what are you getting up? What are you, what are you going out of your way for to touch a loss? I'm on assignment for Jesus. How come you're going to give and to bless and to share and, and, and to, to, to help somebody. I'm on assignment for Jesus. What are you doing pouring your life into that little child in your lap? I'm on assignment for Jesus, amen, uh, for the glory of God. Uh, what, what are you doing helping that stranger broken down on the road? I'm on, a, I'm on assignment for Jesus. Peter is on an assignment. How long would this assignment last? Well, we could journey just while we think of Peter who... Um, to John chapter 21, where this passage is uh, described, do you love me? Feed my sheep. How long? Well, uh, it, it tells us in the passage, it says in verse 18 of John chapter 21, verily, uh, when you were young, you clothed yourself, you walked where you wanted to walk, uh, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee where you wouldn't want to go. Uh, this is my Becker Loose translation of the, of the thoughts that are there. Uh, this he spoke, Jesus, to Peter, signifying by what death he would glorify God. That's why this was uh, spoken in John chapter 21 by the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you ever wonder that? By what death uh, you would have? I, I kind of wonder that sometimes the way I drive. That's why my wife usually drives. <laughs> I just wonder. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, really care um, when, although I'd like to, you know, hang around a while. And I don't really wonder about where I'm going at all because I know the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll get to that in a, just a few minutes in the next portion, last portion of this message. But, but I kind of wonder sometime about the how of that, you know, the how of that. I heard uh, somebody of a dear pastor's wife on Friday that about 10 years ago, his wife uh, wasn't feeling so good, took a nap and did not wake up with an aneurysm. Uh, taking her to glory. And while we can all gasp at that, I, I say, wow, what, what a way to go. I mean, just to go to sleep here and wake up in heaven. I mean, like, like wow, I, I kind of wonder as to how I got looks at me like, Pastor, can you get off this morbid subject, you know? Uh, Peter was hinted at how he would die. It said, he said, when you were young, you went and did whatever you wanted to do, but something happened in your life and you got arrested by the, the spirit of God, the word of God, the work of God, the ministry of God, the mission of God, and, and you will stretch forth your hands and scholars would tell us and history would tell us that in persecution, Peter stretched forth his hands to be carried where he wouldn't want to normally go, where he wouldn't depict, but for the glory of God, he 
was martyred. And, and this was a hard thing for him to hear. In fact, he looked around and saw John, the beloved disciples, and, and the, the beloved disciple, and said, uh, as he saw uh, the other one following Jesus, and he said to him, uh, what, what about this guy? You know, that's our, our reaction. You know, like, like, what about him? And, and I love Jesus' answer in John 21, verse 22. He said, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Don't worry about anybody else. Amen. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Don't look at what anybody else is calling or mission or ministry or, or how they'll go or how they'll stay or what they're called to do. Just you go forward for God. Follow that Follow thou me. Peter says, what about this guy? Uh, Jesus, Jesus says, don't, don't worry about that guy. Worry about one thing, following me and do it over the long haul till death do you part and then really death do you enter the very presence of God. By what death? I will glorify God. That's a better thing to, to worry about uh, than how. Is just that. You'll be glorifying God. And for the glory of God, you would live your life for his glory till you go to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is Peter who? Well, he's, he's Peter who we just described, an apostle sent of God on assignment, on mission. And we too share in that calling to follow, in that calling uh, to, to shepherd and to bless, in, in that calling uh, to be what God has called us to be for his honor and glory. So we we share in that blessing. Peter who? Well, followers and messengers and disciples and shepherds. This is what God has called us to do. Blessing who? Well, I love the description here. It says, to the strangers. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to give you just two words to write in. To the world, we're strangers. To the world... We're strangers. And then by the world, we're, we're scattered. We're scattered. And so scattered strangers. Now, I didn't say scattered brained, okay? That's sometimes what we think about. Uh, strange, you know, we can all agree with as you think about, well, don't ask my wife about, you know, what it's really like to be with. <laughs> it's just a little strange might be one of the comments that would be, that would be uh, there. We're not called to just be uh, strange in the sense of weird, but we are strangers, amen, to this world. We are, we are, we are different from this world. We're to look different, act different, talk different, walk different, think different for the glory of God. Because we know the author of the book. Because we have been uh, set apart from this world and we are strangers and foreigners in this world. This is the imagery that this word, which was used commonly of the Jews in their diaspora, their scattering, was used now in a heightened uh, Christianized type of setting that, that we are the ones who are strangers to this world. And we are scattered by this world, but for the glory of God, we are to be salt and light in this world. The Bible says from Jerusalem, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And, and, and so it, it may sound strange to this world that's living for money. It may sound strange to the person that believes in all the Greek mythological uh, mythological gods. It may sound strange to, to, to hear that one has died for us. God incarnate has died for us. It may sound strange to hear that you live your life by ethics and morals. And, and, and one has said to another in mocking of Christianity, you live your life by, the book, by that book. What a, what a fool. No, not a, not a fool. Not a fool. We are called by God to be strangers to this world, and we are, we are pilgrims in this world. Uh, these two words make me think of that song, This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid out somewhere beyond the blue. Uh, yes, we're scattered by persecution. Yes, we're scattered even from family. 
Uh, one told me this morning that, that he's the only believer in his family. I asked, well, was there a, you know, a gospel witness at the funeral uh, where he just went to? No, there wasn't even a funeral, okay? And, and, and the grip of atheism and the, the grip of, of other uh, false religions and, and, and strangers, uh, strange it was to them. For him to echo his gospel witness that faithfully, what an opportunity we have. Scattered we are throughout the world, uh, but we're scattered to be the salt and the light in it. Like the sprinkling of salt and the blessing of the dispersion of that salt into this world. So by the world we're scattered and to the world we're strangers, but by the Lord we are chosen. We are chosen. Chosen in Christ to be like Christ. Isn't that a beautiful phrase and a beautiful thought today that we are chosen in Christ according to the foreknowledge of God that, that there is a blessing and a joy in knowing that we are God's people. We are God's people. And, and just as he chose Israel, uh, he, he chose us in Christ to be a peculiar people, a holy people, called out from this world, word, this world uh, by the word of God, and the spirit of God is mentioned, and the blood of Christ is mentioned, and a triune blessing here is mentioned in what will blow your mind. What will blow your mind? Try and figure out God. Uh, be careful when somebody says they got it all figured out. I, I've, you know, I've been in a lot of uh, years of, of college and seminary. And they say there's a lot of knowledge in college, Bible colleges, because all the freshmen know everything, they bring it in, but the seniors don't take any way. So it's all stored up in Bible college. And then they go to seminary and they realize that they just began their study of this beautiful and deep book. It is so deep. It is so deep and it is so beautiful. You'll blow a gasket uh, trying to figure out uh, even these truths that we speak of, uh, chosen and called in the Lord. I, I just am a simple preacher. That's all I am. Uh, I, I, I simply want to obey the Lord. The Bible says that, that, that at the ignorance of this time, God, God winked at, but now he commanded all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he ordained, even Jesus Christ. And that we are to call everyone to repent. And that when God says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. They will be saved. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't say whosoever may will call. It says whosoever will. Let him call. And I don't understand. Uh, I, I don't understand that. Whole, how it all works and how it all figures out. I don't understand uh, foreknowledge and predestination into uh, time and from eternity and how all this happens, but I'll give you what I think just because you didn't ask. Aren't you glad you didn't ask for this this morning? You could park, and theologians have, on one or two verses and you could come up with a robotical mechanicalism that would kind of go against many, many other scriptures and, and much of the, uh, of the preaching of the word of God that calls all people everywhere to repent. There are mysteries in this book that you and I will never figure out. We'll never figure out. But I read it from cover to cover and I kind of get something that maybe one word, if you parked on it, won't give you. I, I, I get a God who wants a love relationship with us. That's what I get. And, and so in one verse, we are called, we are chosen, we are the elect of God. And even as that elect nation, they were called to be a lighthouse to the Gentiles, and they miserably failed in that. And God judged them for that miserable failure. The Bible speaks of the means of this. I've given you a verse of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But we are bound always to give thanks to God for you, 
beloved brethren of the Lord, because God hath the, from the beginning chosen you to salvation. And then it adds these words, through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. That there's some, some means, there's some things that happen. Uh, how shall they hear without a preacher? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace. And I see this means of God's redemption is that the gospel would be preached to whosoever and whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, they'll be saved forever, forever. I sat listening to a message one day and I said, oh no, here, here it comes. Uh, uh, and they were preaching on, you know, many are called, the few are chosen. Now, there was a missionary to Alaska that preached on that verse, and he said, many are called, the few are frozen. And <laughs> that was a different message, a different message. But somehow this preacher was getting around to the point where uh, you can never really know, uh, you know, if you were called, and, 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 and it became a very mysterious thing. We were... Uh, going to minister. In fact, they even prayed for us, and we had a lot of gospel tracts uh, to hand out at the Super Bowl, and the pastor asked for volunteers to help the pastor, uh, to help me uh, hand out tracts at the Super Bowl. And I'll never forget this dear lady uh, who volunteered because she had recently come to know Christ as her personal Savior. And, and, and she, had, she had asked the Lord to save her from her sin and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. And in evidence of that, uh, raised her hand to the desire. She just said, I love telling other people how to get saved. And as soon as the service dismissed and we were making preparations to go hand out all these gospel tracts to the people uh, at the stupid bowl, I mean the Super Bowl, um, we were... We were, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was cornered by her. Okay, I was, I was cornered by her, and she says, "I just have this nagging question. I just, I just don't know if I'm, I'm elect of God or if I'm not elect of God." And I, I just, I just said, "Oh Lord, help me have wisdom to answer this." You know, and and I, 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 I just simply opened up the Bible and said. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and I asked her one question. I said, is God a liar? Is God a liar? <laughs> how do you know you're saved? God's not a liar. That's how I know I'm saved. How do you know you're saved? I said, what are you doing here? Well, I want to tell other people about Jesus. I said, sounds like the devil to me. That's really, you know, influencing you to want to do that. You know, we have the fruit of the spirit, the joy of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the calling of the Lord. And these are all evidences. First John goes through this in a, a new desire. And even in our text today, there's a, there's a, 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 a walking and a sprinkling of the blood of Christ into not only salvation, but into sanctification and how we have a desire to be holy and a desire to live for the Lord. And sometimes in this theme, I've just given the illustration that helps me and I'll, 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 you know, just kind of unload it on you and, 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 and it's hypothetical and can get maybe even, uh, it, it can maybe even be blasphemous. But if you hear me and, and don't, don't hang me yet, you'll understand why I'm giving it to you. If, and I don't have my gadget in my hand, if I had my gadget and I, I could probably get a gadget, you know, in my hand, Jenny, give me your gadget real quick. Oh, no, he won't do it. Okay, Kenny, I'll give it back. Oh, I know why he won't. He's used to me smashing them. That's why. <laughs> That's why he won't. And and so if you could put that on record, Sarah, and then send Dave up with it, that would be good. Um, that would be good. Just just record and, and 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 yes, record and Dave, get that up to me real quick, okay? And just record. Um, and and I'm gonna just record something, Dave. Dave, if you could jump up and give me that, that would be great. And I'm gonna put this um, on on selfie mode, okay? And so I'm just gonna put it on selfie mode. Oh boy! And and I don't see selfie mode, but that's okay. I'm sure there's a selfie mode. Maybe you'll see it. And I and I said this recording, Dorinda. 
I love you, Dorinda. I love you so much. And if you ever doubt this, just push rewind and play and know that I love you, Dorinda. Wow. Wow. And then I would give this, not to Sarah, but I would give this to Dorinda. Kenny, can you, you know, or Dave, can you give this to Dorinda and get, get it up so I could play it again? Because I might, might need you again, or she might need it. Now, if I told you, are you ready for this? If I told you that I, Gary Becker, have the patent on digital voice recording, you would say, oh, you would say, oh, I didn't know that. It's in the realm of possibility. Now, those of you that know me well, you would say, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, not this Gary Becker. You know that that's not possible. That Gary Becker could code and mechanically uh, be the engineer behind and have the patent of digital voice recording. Now, hang with me here. That I said I created that technology. It's in the, it's in the O realm of possibility. It's in the O realm of possibility. Now, let me one-up you, and here's where we go almost blasphemous, but I want to do it. Hang on, and you'll realize it's, it's helping you, I hope. If a dog walked by, and I said to you after the dog walked by, I said, by the way, I created that. Whoa. You go from O level, we'll put that level right here, to Wow. Wow level, even bow wow, okay? Like wow, wow. Now, I'm gonna, now hang on, I know you're getting mad at me already. If Dorinda walked by and I said, by the way, I created that in my own image, you would, you would say, well, let, let's go with the illustration. You would go from O, to wow, to awe, <laughs> okay? This is just hypothetical, okay? And not trying to be blasphemous, but now I want to get your mind to God, okay? There is a reading of the Bible that would be an O level that God mechanically uh, decided that when you trip, you say, okay, God, thank you, because he foreordained and predetermined everything about that. And and, 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 and and that is everything mechanical and everything determined. And I'm going to ask the question, could God have done that and made a mechanical, uh, um, uh, us totally robotical and totally mechanical? Yes, like that. I mean, like, like, like man could do that in a, in a mechanical uh, a recording of the patent of that uh, recording that I've given you. But when you read the God of the Bible, is that what you get? And is that all you get? No, I'd say you go from O oh, to wow into utter reverence of awe to the glory of God when you see what God has done. And God, God is an awe God, and he'll blow your mind even trying to figure out uh, this idea of chosen, that we are chosen in Christ to be like Christ. Wow. What an awe relationship. And that somehow this God of the Bible wants what Dorinda wants. Now I'm going to go back to my illustration. She doesn't want a mechanical husband who gave her 41 years ago a recording that says, I love you, Dorinda, I love you, Dorinda. And if you ever doubt this, push re rewind and play uh, and know that I love you, Dorinda. Or like the guy who says, I told her once when I got married and if it changes, I'll let her know. Okay, that's not what she wants. She wants a husband who parks a car for her because it has to go a certain way. And she just says, Gary, would you do that? And I say, I, uh, I'd love to. I'd love to. She wants an awe relationship of love, not mechanicalism. And that's what I read when I, when I read in the Bible. 
that God provided a way of salvation for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and that anyone can get saved, and that the means of that are the preaching of the gospel, the working of the Spirit of God, and the taking of the Word of God, and driving it home in a sinner's heart till he bows his head, his heart, his knees, his life, and says, Ah, God, save me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for coming in my life and changing and forgiving me. This is the work of God, and it's through belief of the truth and obedience to the faith. And, and, and if you got it all figured out, I'd suggest you to go to the hallways of seminary because they had it all figured out there too. But, but you know what? God says that we are wonderfully, and we can be encouraged today, that we are chosen in Christ, in Christ, unto the redemption, the complete forever redemption. What a, what a blessing. You want to be encouraged? You want to be prepared today? Realize that we are chosen in Christ. And so we are chosen by the Lord. We are sanctified by the Lord. And God wants us to be holy by the sprinkling blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are lastly blessed by the Lord. And this is the blessing I want to share with you today. Peter, as he pens his blessing, not as Pope, but as a mouthpiece and a pen piece of God, he says, Peace and grace be multiplied unto you. Wow, that's what I need. I need a multiplication of peace and a multiplication of God's grace in my life. That's what I need to get through this day. It's not talking about uh, a saving grace as you look back and how the grace of God comes and redeems us and we we get saved by the grace of God, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. That 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 grace doesn't need to be multiplied in my life. I have that grace, and, and, and it's not talking about a future grace, for eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Uh, that, that grace is not in view here. The peace that that sets us right theologically with God, this, this peace that we need in our lives because we are at war with God and, and salvation uh, remedies this peace. And the, and the peace that we will have in eternal peace with God is not the peace that I need right now and the peace that I need right today. You know what I need? I need today peace. Today peace. I need today grace. I got up this morning, and it's a miracle that I got up this morning. Why? Because I think I picked up too many sticks yesterday. <laughs> I came home. I came home. I said, oh, Lord, help me. And I went right to bed. <laughs> and, and then I... And then I, I was trying to get everything moving, and I don't know if it was that roll that we did of the sticks to get them all off at once, and the one bundle was a little too big. It was a smaller bundle, but it was a heavier oak tree uh, over there than this one over here. And, and we tried to roll it. We couldn't, but we gave it our all to try, and I think I, I, I needed a little today, Grace. I need a little today, Grace, as I navigate this Christian life. I need it to be multiplied to me. I, I need a little today peace to not 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 salvation peace. I'm 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 fully aware of that. Having received, maybe you're here today and you don't have that peace. Would you run to the cross for that peace? And then there's that future peace of one day in heaven forever. I will have and share that peace uh, forever with God. But but you know what? I'm not there. You know where I am. I'm in this crazy rat race of this world that's coming unglued right now in a world that's a powder keg and not a peaceful place. And you know what? I need the peace of God multiplied in my life, the peace that passeth understanding, the peace that nobody can take away. It's the peace of God in us. It's the peace that would prepare us even for suffering and trials and tribulation. That's what the whole book of 1 Peter will do for us. But right at the beginning of it, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. I'll take that. 
a little multiplication of God's grace to me so that this day could be lived for the glory of God, the grace of God. A, a, little, a little peace today so that the winds can blow financially, the winds can blow economic, the winds can blow social, the winds can blow politically, the winds can blow in the peace supposed treaties of our world uh, and, and it does not matter. The winds can blow, but it does not shake something very precious. What's that? Between me and God. Between me and God, there is a peace that passeth understanding. And it translates to every situation in my life. It translates to every trial, every difficulty, every problem, every possibility of suffering or actuality of suffering. And I can have peace in this storm because I know the Prince of Peace, Jesus. And so this book of 1 Peter, let's get excited about it. It will be a tremendous blessing for he starts out with a big shovel and he dishes it out at us. And what's that shovel full? Full of grace. And it's full of peace. And it's not just a little, it's a lot. And let it be multiplied unto you. So today we thought about Peter who? And we thought about Peter to you. Let's pray together. Father, we are the scattered ones. Uh, We are the ones that are strangers to this world. But we are the ones that are chosen in you, Lord, in a way that would blow our mind if we try to sort out all the mind of God and the heart that you have and the wisdom and the knowledge, Lord, who could who could ascend to all that, Lord? And we just read a precious book and know that you love us and you want us to love you back, Lord. You want a love relationship between us, Lord, and you didn't create us robots, Lord. You created us made in your own image, fallen and marred uh, by sin and without your grace and without your sprinkling of blood, irreparable, But, oh, what a wonder of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ to redeem, to to make new, uh, to to set again this wonderful relationship of peace pass and grace pass of receiving you as personal Savior and grace future and grace and peace future, Lord, of knowing and being with you forever. And, Lord, multiplied grace for the need that I have today your grace, and your peace in our troubled storm. Oh, God, we want to thank you that it's multiplied unto us, even in the first phrases of this beautiful book. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name.